Welcome to this eLearn Security video training lesson on Session Hijacking and Fixation. In this video, we will see three scenarios where an attacker can hijack a session with the goal of impersonating his victim. We will first see how the attacker can use a cross-site scripting vulnerability to steal someone else's cookies, and then use these cookies to browse the targeted web app with the victim session. This is something you have already seen in the XSS model, so we will briefly explain it once again. After that, we will see how the attacker may steal session cookies by sniffing unscripted traffic going to and from the web application and the victim. The last hijacking technique we will see will explain how an attacker, who is able to gain read privileges on the remote web server, can be able to read sessions files and then impersonate the web app users. At the end of this video, we will also see how to exploit a session fixation vulnerability. So let us start by opening our target web application, which is hosted at the address sessionhijacking.site, and then log into the web app with the attacker account. We already know that the comment field in the blog page is vulnerable to XSS. Let's try to insert a simple JavaScript and verify if it works. As we can see, the comment field is vulnerable and the alert appears. What we have to do now is to use this vulnerability in order to steal someone else's cookies. First, let us delete the message here in order to avoid the pop-up each time we open the page, and then let us use a JavaScript payload to steal the user's cookie. Before creating our payload, let's open Firebug and click on the Cookies tab. Here we can see our cookie. Note that the HTTP only flag is not enabled. This means that we should be able to access cookies through JavaScript, and this is critical for our attack. We want to create a payload that reads and sends the current visitor cookies to a website that we control. This website will then receive the cookies and save them into a file. So let's suppose that our website is hosted at the following URL, attacker.site, and that we already have a PHP named steal.php that gets the value of the cookie parameter and saves it into a file. Now we can create a stealthy payload to use in the vulnerable web app. We already have the payload, so we will just copy and paste it in the comment field. Here, we create a new image object and set its SRC property to the URL of our savecookie.php page. With this technique, when the vulnerable web app is loaded, the script will send a request to our page and the user cookies will be sent. Now that the payload is complete, let's write a comment right above the tag script and then click Insert. As we can see, when the page is loaded, nothing suspicious happens. We can only see the comment and nothing else. But if the payload worked, we should have our cookies stored in the attacker's site file. So let's open read.php, and as we can see, our cookie has been successfully stored. With this payload stored in the target web application, each user that loads that specific page will trigger the script, and we will receive his cookie. Now that we have set up the exploit, we can try to browse the vulnerable page from our victim browser, and then see how to use the stolen cookie to impersonate the victim. So let's open the vulnerable app from the victim machine, and let's log in as the user admin. Now that we are logged in, let's open the vulnerable page. Again, nothing suspicious happens, but if we reload the read.php page in the attacker machine, we can see that the victim cookies have been stored. So let's copy the cookie values and then go back into our attacker browser. Let's open Firebug and modify our cookie to match the content of the one we've just stolen. If we reload the page, we can see that we are authenticated as the user admin. The attack works fine, and we have successfully hijacked our victim session. In this first part of the video, we have seen how to exploit an XSS in order to steal someone else's session and impersonate him. Similar to this example, an attacker can obtain the session cookie in many other ways. For example, 
If the attacker is the same network of the victim, and the communications to the web app is not encrypted, the attacker can sniff the session ID and impersonate the victim. So let's suppose that the attackers and the victim are attached to the same local network. Let's also suppose that the attacker can sniff the network traffic by means of ARP spoofing. The first thing an attacker would do is to start Wireshark in order to analyze all the traffic in the network. Since the traffic will go through HTTP, we can also use the HTTP filter. This allows us to intercept all the HTTP traffic in the network. Now that we have our filter set up, we can start sniffing on the ETH0. Let's now switch to the victim machine, log out, and log in once again. Now that we are logged in, let's perform some requests by navigating the web application, and then let's go back in the attacker machine and see the traffic we have sniffed. Here we can see all the communications of the victim. Let's inspect the network packets in order to find the HTTP request response where the user authenticates himself on the web application. Here we can see the request to the page login.php, and right after that, the request to user.php. This is what we are looking for. In order to read the session cookie transmitted by the victim, let's right-click on one of the requests and select Follow as TCP Stream. A new window appears, showing the client-server communication, and here we can find the session cookie sent by the client to the server. In the same way as before, we can copy this cookie and paste it into the attacker browser. So let's open Firebug, then the Cookies tab, and then edit the current cookies. As you can see, the cookies are the same as the previous session, even if we log out and log in. This is a bad session implementation. Note that the whole attack is possible because we are able to sniff the victim traffic and the traffic is not encrypted. Indeed, we would also be able to sniff credentials transmitted. The last session hijacking attack we want to see is possibly only if we have access to the web server and if we have read privileges on the path where the session's files are stored. Exploiting and gaining access to the server is outside the scope of this video, so we will suppose we were able to upload a shell on the target web application. The shell is very simple. It is just a PHP file that accepts a parameter and uses this value to read the files on the specified path. The shell has been uploaded at this address. Of course we have an error, because we have not specified the path parameter. Since we know the remote application uses PHP and the OS is Linux, we will read the session files at the following path. var forward slash lib forward slash php5. Here we are. The shell works fine and prints the session files. As you can see, this session file here has the same value of the session cookie obtained via traffic sniffing. So this is the session file for the admin user. But we also have other sessions files, and we can now hijack all the following users. We just need to copy the value and replace it in our cookies. For example, let us copy one of these values and edit our cookies. This cookie is not working. It is probably related to some old session that has not been properly deleted. Let us keep going and try with other cookies. This cookie doesn't work either. It's not a problem. We just have to try again until we find a valid session. We found one. Indeed, we are now logged in with a different user. The last type of attack we are going to see in this video is called session fixation. Here again, the main goal of the attack is to impersonate the victim session. Differently from the previous three attacks, this time the attacker doesn't need to steal the victim cookies. In this case, the attacker fixates the session ID and then forces the victim to use it. For this attack, we will use the web application hosted at the following domain, sessionfixation.site. If we inspect the web app, we can see that when we click Log In, the application redirects us to the page login.php and sets a random value for the parameter SID. Each time we click on the login page, it sets a new random cookie. Let's then see what happens if we log into the web application. 
Note that right now, the cookie's value is set to 31. When the authentication is completed, the user is redirected to the page myacc.php. If we inspect our cookies, we can see that the session ID contains the value of the parameter SID contained in the previous URL. So the SID recycled even after the user logs in. Knowing this, an attacker can send a crafted URL to the victim in order to fixate his session. This way, the attacker doesn't need to steal the session, he already knows it. In this example, the victim has received an email from the attacker saying that there's a new deposit in his bank account. If we inspect the link, there's nothing suspicious. Indeed, it is very similar to the links that the web application provides when we click the login button. So let's open the link and then let's log in in the web app in order to verify our account. We are now successfully authenticated. And if we inspect our cookies, we can see that the session ID is the same provided in the URL contained in the attacker's message. The attacker can then use this information to impersonate the victim session. So let's go back into our attacker machine and see how. What we have to do to impersonate the victim is to change the session ID with the one provided in the email. So let's edit it with Firebug and then let's load the page My Account. As we can see, we are now authenticated in the web application as user target. This kind of attack is possible because the session ID is embedded in the URL rather than inside the cookie, and the web app will use the session ID and bind it to the victim session. In this video, we've seen how an attacker can use different attacks to steal and impersonate someone else's session. This concludes our video training lesson on session hijacking and session fixation. Thank you for joining us.